Okay, so let's change this from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. And then we can go ahead and load in our movie clip. So we need to set the start and end frame. So we can just press the set scene frames button and that will do it for us. And then we also need to prefetch the clip. If it doesn't prefetch all the way, what you need to do is go to file, then user preferences, over to system, then you can scroll down and just increase this memory cache limit. You don't have to go to the maximum, but uh, just increase it enough to prefetch a clip. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a save as well. So the idea I have in mind is some sort of dark elf. So that means giving him a scar on the face, maybe change the colour of his eyes, and also adding a bit of grunge to the face overall. Um, and we're going to be doing that with some masks and some tracking. So let's just jump to the first frame. I want to change the motion method to uh, affine. And we also want to change, the, change it from keyframe to previous, and then check normalize. So we control and left click just to add a marker now and scale this up just to see how it's looking. I want to come over here and then go down and just activate the search size. So obviously this search size is far too big. Um, when you scale up the marker, this the search size is just it gets even bigger. So make sure you scale down the search size so it doesn't take too long. Okay, so let's also click copy from active track and then press G and we can move this over. Since we don't have any markers on the face, we're just going to have to use things like the corner of the eyebrow, the nose, things like that. So I'm just going to add a couple of more markers here. And the idea is, because we're doing planar tracking, the idea is to add four tracks pretty close together. So this one over here won't work since it's too far away. If we scroll through the footage, we see that since the head turns, the, the sideburns sort of turn away and it's just too far. So that's not going to work. There is a red mark here on the face which we can track. It's almost it's hard to see, but Blender will be able to track it. So I'm just going to add um, a tracker here. So pretty lucky. So when you're doing this and you've, you're getting ready to film it, maybe you want to add a couple of tracking markers to the face. Just add four dots. Okay, so with all them selected, let's just track these forward. And again, because these are quite big, it might take a while to um, to track all the way through. So I'm just going to speed this part up. Okay, so they seem to work fine. Let's just scrub through and uh, see how they did. Yeah, I think they'll work for this example. Let's jump to the end frame, since that's where the face is facing us the most. Change this to solve, and then if we hit this planar track button here, it creates um, a planar track for us, which is brilliant. If we scrub through, we see it works just how we expect it to. It's like a planar track stuck to the face. And you can move these around if you want to, but I'm happy with how it's um, positioned, so I'm going to leave it as it is. So that's the scar done. So now we need to add some tracks for the eyes. Let's just jump to the first frame, and we want to change the motion for the uh, the tracking. So I'll go back to the mo uh, the motion method, and let's change this back to location. And let's just control and left click. It's far too big, so we can scale this down. Something like that should be fine. And let's just increase the search size. And then we can hit copy from active track since we're going to add another one over here for this eye. And these will be moving the masks for the eyes and for the eyelids. So it's very important. So it's very important that you do this step. So we select both of them and then we can track them forward as well. And they're pretty quick since they're not that big. Okay, so now we, since we've done the tracking, uh, we can move on to the masking. And it's pretty simple. But let's first start with the eyes, and we'll change this to tra uh, to masking, and add a new mask. And let's just rename this, since we're going to have quite a few masks. We don't want to get confused. We can rename this eyes. Okay, so we have mask layers here, and um, when we first add our mask, then it'll just add a, a new mask layer for us. 
Okay, so if we left click now, we can add the 2D cursor. And we just want to give that, we just want to put that as close to the center as possible. Then up here at the top, we can just add circle. And it adds uh, a mask for us. So it's just added a circle mask. And we want to increase this uh, size. We also want to move it in position. Now with this step, you don't have to be too accurate since we're going to be using a node to um, to refine this, to feather it. So you don't even need to put a mask, uh, to any feather on it either. So be careful which marker you select. We want to select the eye marker and then we want to press B to border select, select the mask. And if we hit control and P, we've now parented the mask to the tracker. So we can see that it moves fine. We don't need to worry about that one. So jump to the first frame. And let's do the same for this eye over here. So again, you can use uh, the mask layers if you want. You can just add a new layer and um, do it that way. But I'm just going to do it on the same layer. Makes no difference. It's all part of the same mask. So left click to add the 2D cursor. Then add the circle. Then we want to refine this. Um, just want to scale it and also move it as well. Again, you don't have to be deadly accurate with this step because um, we'll be using a node later on to sort of refine the feathering. So just like that one, we need to parent them. Parent them. So select this tracker here, then B to border select, and then Control P. So now we can see that the eyes are parented to the tracks, which is what we want. Okay, so that's the masks for the eyes done. We now need to create another mask layer for the uh, the eyelids and what we can do is down here at the bottom we just click this plus button here it, this creates a new mask layer so let's rename this to eyelids and this step you need to be a bit more accurate than the last step since um, the effects can be ruined if you uh, if you, you know you rush through this so if we hit control and then click the mouse button we can create these points and which method you use is entirely up to you. If you want to change the handle types to aligned, then that's into up to you. But I'm going to keep it like this for now. Then we hit uh, Alt C to close this. Okay, so just like before, we need to parent this to um, to the tracker. So if we right click on this tracker here, and then press B, and then select this mask, and then hit Control P. So now we can scrub through, and we can see that it's uh, yeah, it's it's parented to it. The trouble we do have though, the eye, is, uh, since the head's turning, the yeah the mask isn't going to stick to it perfectly. I'm going to show you around here. The eyelid starts to um, creep in. So what we need to do is actually animate this mask. And it's very easy to do. I've got another tutorial showing you how to do that. So if you want to click the link in the description, it'll take you to it. But essentially we're just clicking this red button here and then just animating this manually by jumping to a certain frame and just moving some of these points. And again, the more accurate you are with this step, the better the effect will look. So to maybe take your time and don't rush through it. Again, I'm going to speed through this now because it's going to take a while. And then when you've finished with that one, you can create another layer. So for this example, I'm going to use two layers. I'm going to use this one for the left side. Again, you don't have to. You can just create everything on one layer. Um, but this is up to you. I'm going to create the plus button. I'm going to press the plus button and create a new layer. This is going to be for the right side. And this just helps so you don't get confused or you don't um, select the other one by mistake, something like that. So it's not entirely necessary, it's, uh, it's if you want to or not. So again, repeat the step. We're just going to uh, create a mask and then parent it to it. And then just animate the, um, animate the mask. It's pretty simple.